Blessings family in Christ, the plot has thickened and I now have some more evidence explaining why and exposing why Bishop Marmari was attacked in his church in Sydney. Now, if you haven't watched my previous videos regarding this issue, I recommend that you do go and watch those first because it will give you a bigger picture of the entire event. But I am going to cover briefly what I spoke about previously and then show you even more evidence. Now, some good news is that Australia's police force have now confirmed that it was a terror attack. The motivations for the attack were religiously motivated because of the false prophet Muhammad. Now take a look at this report and then we'll head into the evidence and the words of Bishop Marmari himself. Thank you for being here. Shortly after 7pm last night, police were called to a church in Wakeley in southwest Sydney in relation to reports that a male was stabbing the clergy inside that building. Police responded and arrested a young person and he was restrained inside that building. Subsequently, as it has been mentioned, at 1.35 a.m. this morning, after consideration of all the material, I declared that it was a terrorist incident. Strike Force Petrina has been established to investigate that side of the events last night and a referral has been made and agreed to by the Joint Counterterrorism Investigation Team that will work, we will work jointly with New South Wales Police lead with AFP and other Commonwealth agencies in this investigation. So that is some great news that the police force have actually acknowledged the truth for once. Despite the amount of Muslims across social media denying that he's a Muslim, we have this video evidence proving that he is. Take a look. <laughs> So you heard it for yourself, he literally went and attacked Bishop Marmari because Bishop Marmari apparently insulted his false prophet. Now in a previous video I asked if anybody in the audience speaks the same language, can they confirm that the translation is accurate? And many, many people confirmed that he was in fact claiming that exact statement. So now with that being said, let's take a look at some of the words of Bishop Marmari himself, which apparently provoked this attack. Now, the insanity of this entire situation has become even worse when I read through my YouTube comment section because Muslims were justifying it and saying Bishop Marmari shouldn't have spoken about Islam that way if he didn't want that to happen. Now, if you don't recognize how insane that is and how dangerous it is to have those type of people in society, then you really need to evaluate what civilization is actually about and what it is really about to live in the Western world. But all things work out for the good of those who love God and that is us, the body of Christ. And this situation has really been used to wake up so many politicians across the world in the West who previously had a different opinion of Islam and this has really, really woke them up. Now, let's take a look at the words of Marmari that apparently provoked this attack. Do you want to be loved? Everybody will say yes. You know, even when you look at the at the serial uh, killers, even when you look at the at the big dr uh, drug addicts and and drug dealers, if you trace their life all the way back back to childhood, I can assure you a huge percentage they were lacking love at their childhood. That's why they ended up who they ended up. It is the love that forms and shapes and molds a human being. It is that love that never fails. It is that love that never dies. Christ is calling us to love him. He is not calling us to follow a set of rules, guidelines and regulations. And let me say this to all the religions of the world. You're talking about you must fast and you must do this and you must you do your penances and whatever you have to do. Let me say this. To enter in the presence of God, who can do what God wants? Who can fulfill the fullness of the law of God? We are nowhere near that perfection to do and abide by what God does. He showed that in the Old Testament, the Israelite nations, they failed him from the word go till the very end. But he is the never failing God, his mercy that carries us, all of us as humans, regardless whether we are Christians or not. So when those religions out there with all love and respect, they talk about laws, I'll ask them, are you fulfilling that law? 
Of course not. You're falling very short of that law. So don't tell me you have to do this where you are failing as a leader. Your prophet failed those laws. Your own prophet failed them. Who? Muhammad. And all the other leaders. And the, and the very reason why Muhammad failed because he's dead. Their book says that. But their book also says about my Messiah, even though the Isa in the Quran is not the Christ of the Holy Bible, totally separate people. We cannot claim something that is not truthful. I know truth hurts. I'm not offending people, I'm speaking the truth. And if it offends you, I'm really sorry not. I'm not sorry for that. But let me tell you one thing. Your book says that Asa, son of Mary, went up to heaven alive and he will come back to judge the dead and the living. If I ask a Muslim who judges, they will say God. Well, you're telling me this prophet will judge. So which is which? Has the prophet taken the role of God? Has God gone on vacation and he's come and take his position? No, but Asa is the living Messiah. Even their book says, I speak Arabic, I read Arabic, I'm fluent in Arabic. When they say, Amma Isa ibn Maryam fahuwa kalimatullahi wa ruhan minhu, but Isa son of Mary, Jesus son of Mary, is the word of God and the spirit of God. Now let me ask you, my dear Muslim, if you're claiming Isa is a prophet, then how come all the other prophets which you believe in, you believe in Moses, you believe in Isaac, you believe in all the prophets of the Old Testament. How come none of the Old Testament prophets were referred to as the word of God, except Isa? Why? How come all the prophets and every single human being on the face of this planet was born of an earthly father and an earthly mother, yet Jesus, son of Mary, was born in a virginal birth? Through a virginal birth, he has an earthly mother, but has no earthly father for his father who art in heaven. Why? This raises question marks. How come this man is different? His birth is different. His life is different. Even his end is different. He went up alive and he will come back to judge because he is different. That's the whole story. He is different, my dear friend. I don't speak about Jesus just because I believe I'm a Christian or I dress up in this cloth or I have read the Bible, which I have. No, I believe in the Lord and I know the Lord. He is six foot one, long face, tan skin, greenish eyes, browny, crispy hair split in the middle all the way to the shoulders with a very short beard. And after 2023 years, he is still 33 years of age and kicking baby. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yesterday he is, today he is, and forevermore he is. He is the never changing God who was revealed in the flesh over 2000 years ago. And let me say this to the whole world. Yes, he came over 2000 years through a virginal birth from our Holy Mother Mary. And, at, at, and he was crucified, not he was sent up to heaven. No, he was crucified. He died in the flesh on the cross and he was buried, but rose from the dead on the third day, ascended to heaven. And he's been sitting there at the right hand of the father over 2000 years ago. And he will come back again to judge the dead and the living because he's not just a prophet for he is God revealed in the flesh. This is the Jesus I talk about. That's why I fear no one. I fear nothing. I'm not here for people to love me. I'm here for Jesus to be pleased with this vessel that he uses for his glory and his glory only. He has showed me heaven and hell. And let me say this with love and humility. When you go to heaven, I can assure you, I can assure you, not because I'm a Christian, not because I'm a bishop, not because I believe in Jesus Christ, but I can assure you, in heaven you, Muhammad will not greet you. Buddha will not greet you. Krishna will not greet you because they will not. It, was, it will be only one who is the way, the truth, and the life. It will be Jesus Christ of Nazareth who died for you and me. I'm inviting you to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior because there is no other way. If we don't have him, we are doomed forever. For in him, eternal life lies. And because of this pure truth, that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And Bishop Marmari preached it without fail, without watering it down, and without giving leeway to false prophets, but openly rebuked Muhammad and exposed him for what he is, a false prophet. He's not the way, he's not the truth, he's not the life, but he's dead. And Marmari said this boldly. What happened? 
well, we saw earlier. Yet Marmari's response to such wickedness, to such brutal violence, was that he is going to pray for that young man. That demon-possessed young man who literally tried to take the life of another living being, Marmari is going to pray for him. And that is an example for all of us Christians, all of us in the body of Christ. We should love our enemies as Christ commanded us to. Now I'm going to show you another clip of Marmari. And apparently this was another provocation, as they are calling it, of the attack. Now, if free speech is provocation, people need to understand and reevaluate the difference between free speech and provoking. You converted from Christianity to Islam. Your life is not under threat here in the U.S. I converted from, from Islam to Christianity. My life is under death. That's the difference between Christianity and Islam. Okay, so let me ask you this. Yes. I got a question for you guys. I'm a data guy. I'm a finance guy. How many Christians have died uh, going from being Christian to Muslim? How many Muslims have actually been killed or died going from being a Muslim to a Christian? There's no yeah. data on that because these kinds of things are not recorded. They're not considered crime. There should be, though, right? Islam. I mean, shouldn't, I, be, shouldn't there, there, even if there's some stories to be able to say, yes. you know, X, Y, Z individual. I have stories. I have one in Mauritania who was condemned for to be executed. We just got him out to Paris because we negotiated with the government there. I have people right now in Libya, they are under death penalty in Libya. I have people who got killed in Jordan, for example, because I do my show, people contact me. I have people who got killed in Jordan, their parents killed them because of, they became uh, uh, Christians from, from a Muslim background. We have people in different places in the world, in the Muslim community, they kill them. And if they get, if they get to flee, that's the best outcome. Islam is to be applied forever on every place since the time of Muhammad until today. So Muslims are just seeking to be a majority one day. And the, the, if Muslims are majority today, yeah. these two brothers will witness my killing in front of people. And they will be happy cheering the crowds that I was killed. Answer me, yes or no? We did answer. Yes, we did answer. Yeah, so I should be killed. We did answer. I deserve to be killed because I left Islam and became a Christian. According to Islamic law, an apostate like you would be killed. Yes. Okay, thank you. In all the history. The moment you deny the divinity of Christ, he is not the son of God, he is not God, and he was never crucified, you have denied your own salvation. When you deny your salvation, you've denied life. When you deny life, what are you gonna end up with? Death. That's why the one who's sitting on it is death. You're gonna get nothing but death. Islam flourished and expanded with the sword. That's why on the flag of Saudi Arabia is green with two swords crossing. That's how it went with the sword. Jesus said, my sword is my word and my word is love. You flourish through love, not by chopping heads. You flourish with love. I don't want to offend no Muslim. That's not my intention. But this is what their book literally says. So don't tell me we believe in your Jesus. You don't. My Jesus is God revealed in the flesh. He was crucified to save the whole world. This is my Jesus. There is, in here, it's non negotiable area. We can't sit and say, let's come up with a solution. Now, this is the solution and the only solution. You better believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He is God Himself. He was crucified. He was buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and He will come to judge the living and the dead, for He is God revealed in the flesh. Period. Now, before I end this video, I want to tell you this. The most beautiful news you can ever hear. The difference between Christianity and every other quote-unquote religion is that in Christianity, we are not saved by how good we are how much we have done, how well we have kept the law. No, we're not saved by anything to do with ourselves. This is the difference between truth, between love and the world. We are saved by grace. The grace of who? Of God, of Yahweh, through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. 
We are saved by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Take a look at his words. John 6.47 Christ himself states, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believes on me has everlasting life. The life that Christ gives us never ends. When we believe on him, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit unto the day of redemption. So God is offering you this gift today. If you accept it or not, that's up to you. But if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. He died, his blood was shed, and he rose on the third day. He is the word who became flesh, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I love you so much. Like and subscribe for more content, and I'll see you on the next one. Shalom, shalom.